Former President Donald Trump and his MAGA movement have very openly tied themselves to Christianity, specifically Christian nationalism. And that has had a result on the church in the fact that people are fleeing. According to the Public Religion Research Institute, a quarter of Americans now in 2023 are religiously unaffiliated. Now, they're not going anywhere else, by the way. They're not going to other religions. They're staying unaffiliated. In fact, the only religious category currently experiencing growth is unaffiliated, whereas religion in general tends to be declining. And it's actually declining faster thanks to Trump and his Christian nationalism. Now, in a single decade, uh, from 2013 to 2023, the percentage of Americans saying that their religion is the most important thing or among the most important things in their life went from 72% to 53%. Now, people still have beliefs. People can still be spiritual while not actually belonging to an official designated religion. And so that could be happening as well, an increase in spiritualism, but distance from organized religion because of the actions of churches or church officials or, you know, people, politicians related to churches or related to religion. So, like I said, there's still a lot of people in the country who are religious, but that number has gone down. And a lot of it has to do with the extremism and the ties to politics and political figures. In fact, Michael Emerson, a sociologist at Rice University and author of several books on American Christianity, said, quote, the drop in the percentage of Americans saying religion is important in their lives is stunning, especially in just a short 10-year period. The now intimate tie between religion and a host of political and social positions for many people either drives them away from religion altogether or leads them to distance themselves. Wow. Um, David Campbell, a political scientist at Notre Dame and co-author of Secular Surge, a no-fault line in American politics, Adds to that by saying, an increasing number of Americans have an allergic reaction to the mixture of religion and conservative politics, including the MAGA movement. He continues, to these people, re religion is equated with conservative politicians and policies. If that is not their politics, they want nothing to do with religion. This was true before the emergence of Trump and the MAGA movement, but has accelerated since so many evangelical leaders have embraced Trump. So I think that's interesting because we saw this trend begin in the 1990s, 1980s uh, with, you know, the, the religious right, the, the so-called moral majority. And it's just gotten even more extreme now. And the Republican Party is even more inextricably tied to the extremes of Christianity specifically. All right. So now The Guardian's Adam Gavitt noted this in an article published on April 7th. In both 2016 and 2020, Trump resoundingly won the vote of white evangelicals. That's very important. White evangelicals. That's his biggest support group. His campaign, Gavitt writes, is doubling down on religious imagery, securing the evangelical base, and signaling sympathies with Christian nationalism. Trump has increasingly begun to lean into the right-wing social conservatism that white evangelicals who make up 14% of Americans favor. It was clear in February when Trump spoke at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention, a gathering of the kind of conservative Christians who lead mega churches, host televangelist shows, and claim to receive prophecies from God. Gabbard observes that although the bond between Trump and white evangelicals is baffling in light of his history, it is quite real and growing even stronger. So, yeah, give it his history, right? So, <laughs> this is a person who has had alleged multiple affairs, right? Sexually abused E. Jean Carroll. Okay, he's found liable for that uh, in a court. So, <laughs> court of law. Um, and, and numerous, you know, fraud scandals. Okay, uh, th this is not someone who... It doesn't make sense to me that someone could look to this man as a religious figure. It doesn't make any sense to me. The most least Christian, alleged Christian in the country. One who, in my opinion, uses faith to basically screw over the followers and convince them, hey, don't worry, you can give me your money. You're not going to need it, right? I, but I need it because I'm the anointed one.
It doesn't make any sense to me, but yet there it is. So evangelicals clinging to Donald Trump, Donald Trump's clinging to him right back. And while everyone else is running away. <laughs> now, Gabbett said that this is baffling, but Kristen Cope du May in her 2020 book, Jesus and John Wayne, how white evangelicals corrupted a faith and fractured a nation is not surprised, saying, quote, evangelicals hadn't betrayed their values and backed in Trump. Their support is a culmination of their half century long pursuit of a militant Christian masculinity that disdains pluralism and valorizes masculine aggression. Well, when you look at it that way, yeah, I suppose that makes sense. <laughs> and you see that aggression in the rhetoric that they're using. Um, well, we've got to take back America. You know, Christian values. We need, we need to you know, punish uh, people, punish our opposition. They hate America. They hate Christianity. We're going to come for them. We're going to win. So they're getting smaller and smaller. And I'm talking about the uh, evangelicals, right? Um, which makes them more militant. The evangelical right specifically. That in turn makes them smaller because people are running away. And them getting smaller makes them even more militant. So it's just a cycle. And this has been going on, like I said, since the 1980s and 90s with the rise of religious non-affiliation. And that was, of course, in reaction to that religious right, to that moral majority. In fact, a study by Campbell and colleagues found that people are more likely to say that they lack a religious identity after reading a news story about a religious right candidate. So, nonetheless, you have the merges, merging of Trumpism, Christianity, you got this Christian nationalism, uh, and that's not a good thing. Sam Perry, a political scientist at Oklahoma University and co-author on books on conservative American Christianity, said this, We see conservative or Republican Americans becoming more likely to identify as evangelical Christians, not because they've had a conversion experience, but because those identities, conservative, Republican, and evangelical, or traditional Catholic, are becoming aligned. Perry adds that this merger has turned off younger, left-leaning, or moderate Americans who might have formerly identified as Christians. So, in a way, you know, trying to hold on to that base of evangelicals has actually insulated it and prevented them from bringing in more people. Kind of ironic. Uh, now, Robert Jones, president and founder of PRRI, says that those who have left are happy to stay that way. They found that only 9% of the religiously unaffiliated said that they are seeking a religion that is right for them. So they just rather not go with anything at all, which makes sense to me. My hunch, he said, is that, the, is that if there is a Trump effect to these dynamics, his takeover of the Republican Party and conservative white Christian politics has been confirming to many who left that they made the right decision. And Look, personally, I've seen this play out uh, in my personal life, uh, family members or people that I know that, you know, uh, white Christian have fallen into this Trumpism that's even more hardcore in evangelical. And I've also seen the opposite, people leaving religion, leaving the church because of that effect uh, that Trump has had. So it's it's gone both ways, and I'm sure a lot of people who are watching right now might have experienced, you might have experienced a similar dynamic, uh, one way or the other, or, or even both ways, uh, as it happens. And so I think it's pretty clear that this, this is what happens when religion gets tied into a reactionary political movement that is refusing to change with the times, refuses to be more inclusive, it just becomes more and more extreme, more and more insular, and actively tries to take back and use whatever power it has to take back the country to a time where a lot of people have had less rights than they do now. It's not a surprise that there's so much pushback, that there are so many people that have left that may have considered, like, like I said, consider themselves good Christians that look at this and say, oh, I don't want any part of this. Not a surprise. Shouldn't be shocked at all that there are so many people now that are going against that. 